sweet liquid. Bring that up to a nice rolling boil. While it's boiling, that's where we add our hops. Boil with the hops for an hour, and then transfer one more time back to the far side. And this time, we're transferring the liquid through a side inlet and spinning it around in a whirlpool fashion. And that whirlpool, that spinning, is gonna draw the hops to the center where they settle out into a nice cone along with some of the, the proteins. We'll settle out into that cone in the bottom and we can transfer just the liquid off the side through my chiller into fermentation. Colin, you're finally here! I see you're transferring a one from another. What are you doing right now? I'm working on making a batch of our Parched Pig Toasted Amber Ale, which is our best-selling house beer made right here on the ship. I'm typically making four styles all year round. This is, happens to be a bit of a personal favorite, and uh, we're right in the middle of the hot side of our brewing process. Wow, this is great. If you want to see more, catch our interview or catch what we're going to be doing later. Um, Colin, once this is done transferring, can I try a little? Maybe we can do a little sampling. All right, great. Until next time, everyone. Keep on brewing. Gotta go. <laughs> All right. We haven't talked about it. Right now, though, as of two weeks ago, uh, I just found out at the naming ceremony, uh, our beer is available on land at the American Airlines Arena. So if you go watch a Miami Heat game, uh, you can go to the Carnival Branded Bar and get Parched Pig West Coast IPA, you know, on three different bars around the stadium, which is great. Uh, and I didn't know, we had talked about it like a year and a half ago, when we first came up with the idea of, hey, what if we did this brew on land thing? Oh, we could sell it, we could sell it at the stadium. And that was sort of the last I heard, and then, I found out from some of our like the big wigs who came for the naming ceremony that oh yeah we just we sent that. we just sent the beer they should be like starting selling it this week so yeah if you uh, That's cool. uh, and I found the right person to ask for tickets so next time I'm yeah. gonna buy, I'm gonna go check it out for work two brewers that are yeah. in processing that we're hiring paperwork takes a long time so first one should be here in January I'm gonna train them and then send them to Vista to give Ron a break, so it, it might be Mike. If it's Mike at the brewery, that's my new hire. Yeah. Say hi for I'll, I'll make sure that I've got you. Whoever it is, whoever it is, say hi for I'll make sure I've got you. But uh, then, then we're hiring another one who's going to come on and give me a vacation. And then the idea was that I would do one round of ship business. Supervise, check on everybody, and then launch Mardi Gras. That's right. Since Mardi Gras pushed back a bit, I don't know what my dates look like yet. I haven't sat down, you know. But after the first of the year, I'll settle all that. Uh, anyway, we've gotten through our four beers. I do want to go inside and check out the cellar. So come on along inside. Uh, Scott, what are you doing in my brewery? Uh, uh, I was making sure. The beer was chilled. Right. If you want a sample off the tank, you just have to ask. Okay, okay. Well, while you're here, I need to ask a question. Why is it so cold in here? Well, it's cold in here, a little bit colder because we've got lots of cold beer. This tank, the liquid inside, is being held at almost freezing. Just freezing. above freezing. Wow. That, so, how many beers are we making right now? I've got four beers that I'm making all year round, and then I've got one extra tank it's gonna have some seasonal beers and some fun stuff. Well, I'm looking here and you have eight tanks. So is this a staging process? That, I mean, like, this one might be for next week, that one is for today. Right, exactly. So how does this work? The brewing process takes a minimum of two weeks for all of my beers. Okay. So for the beers that are really my quick sellers, I've got a couple uh, batches in different parts of the process. So the next batch might be almost ready, and then I'm brewing another batch Right, right on the back side. Yep. Now, I want to know this. If I want a fresh beer, they always put them in kegs. They always move them to the side. Now, how does this beer get to your bar? Right. Now, our serving tanks on this side, these yes. tanks are holding my finished beer. And the beer is being piped directly from these tanks through pipes under the floor to 
to the bar. You mean to my room? I mean to the bar. To the bar. Now, if you hear a little bit of a ticking sound in the background, that means that somebody at the bar is tapping a beer. We're pouring directly from these tanks right there at the bar. So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Microbreweries usually don't go direct from tank to bar. So Carnival is actually going from the tank directly, directly, the directly from the tank. Some brew pubs will do this sort of thing because yeah. it does give you the best opportunity for very fresh beer. That's incredible. This is incredible. No, I have to ask. I have to ask because I'm here. Can I have a taste? Yeah, Scott, I got one more treat for you. Oh, we're you do. What we're going to do, what we're going to do is sample a beer right off the fermentation tank. Now, this beer is finished and it's pretty much ready to serve. Uh, and it'll be going into the serving tanks very shortly. Uh, this is my farmhouse ale, okay. which is a Belgian style saison. Oh, it's gonna pour, oh, Belgian it's style. It's going to pour a little bit cloudy, but that's intentional. And it's going to have a little bit of fruity and spicy characteristics now, from that I, Belgian Can I piece. ask why it's, there's rings on it? Yeah, this. so this thing is uh, what German brewers refer to as a pigtail. Uh, as pig a swivel, and, and we and call anchor. it a pigtail because, well, the pig and anchor, and it looks kind of, kind of like yeah. a pigtail. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to sample right off of here, and wow. this apparatus allows us to pour an appropriate sample. I like the word appropriate sample. Yep. We'll be able to get a pretty good sample from here, and there we go. Oh my. Now, I just have to let you know the camera person is probably drooling a little bit right now. Ah. But don't worry, camera person, you'll you'll get you'll get something, okay? This just nod the camera, yes, yes, I will. Okay, okay, good. All so right. this is a fruity so, beer, Belgian style. Yep. And so it's gonna have a lot of uh, I can smell interesting, yep, interesting yeast oh. character. Oh. A little bit of spiciness, a little bit of fruitiness. Yeah, what is that? Root that I'm smelling. Yep, and it's all coming, it's actually all coming from the yeast. You might get really? a little bit of clovey or pepper, maybe yeah. a little bit of banana in the aroma, but that's all coming from the Belgian yeast. Now, is there a different type of yeast you use to make different beers then? Yep. Yeast is one of our four main ingredients in okay. beer, and it does provide a lot of the flavor. So different types of yeast will produce different flavors that are appropriate for different sizes. Wow, this is great. Cheers. Cheers. Let's try this. Oh, I'm supposed to sip it. Very fresh. This is very fresh. This is great. Colin, how does somebody get a hold of you? Can they get a hold of you? Yeah, you can follow along. If you want to check out what I'm doing on board, you can follow along on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as Colin the Beer Admiral. So check out Colin Beer Admiral. And if you happen to find yourself on one of our brewery ships, well, look for me. Right now I'm on Carnival Panorama, but I do go ship to ship a little bit. So Vista, Horizon, or Panorama for now. So now, do they all have breweries? Those three have breweries on board. Okay. I supervise the brewery, brewers on those ships and uh, kind of run the whole program. So I've got three ships right now making fresh beer. So, right on board. so what you're saying though is the Panorama is the place to be. Oh, absolutely. Of absolutely. course, because you have the beer master, Admiral, <laughs> right here. Now, I have to ask, how long have you been brewing beer? I've been brewing beer professionally for almost 10 years, nine ten and a half years, years. yeah. I, but before that, I started as a home brewer, geez, almost, almost 15 years ago. Okay, I have to ask this. Was it at your parents' house or was it in the bathroom in a college? Well, it was, uh, it, it started out, did my first couple batches uh, with one of my chemistry professors at college. Really? Yep. You mean a professor? Okay. Shh. Now, this is something that might not be happening we were, now. We were, we were all of age and uh, it was, uh, although there was the scientific aspect was one of my chemistry professors who was a an avid home brewer and uh, introduced us to the process, the steps, and okay. how we make. Let's do a little shout out to that college. Which college was that? Can we give that name? Um, Probably not. I, I don't know. I was. Uh, I, I uh, guess so. Yeah, I'm a I'm a graduate of Franklin and Marshall College in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. See, he's a graduate. That's all we're going to say. <laughs> At what college again? Franklin and Marshall in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And you're saying chemistry is the best thing to do. It's a, it's a fantastic. It's a fantastic. Uh, they have a fantastic program. Yeah. Fantastic program. Who would be that best? Who's that teacher that is? Uh, he's actually no longer at the school. Oh. He uh, uh, moved on, but. Uh, 
we, it's a, a great opportunity to learn about the process because fermentation is science. And there's, there's fermentation science going on whether you're making beer or wine. Uh, and it's a great way to apply the things that I learned academically in a very real world, tangible way that makes a lot of people very happy. And you're having fun doing it. And I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Now, there, one last question I have. How much beer do people drink in one, or let's say seven days? Yeah. Is, are, do you, I mean, literally, in do a, you go through these tanks? In a seven day cruise, I'm going through a little bit over 200 gallons of beer. 200 gallons, I wish I could take this home. And, and I'm only drinking a very small portion of that. Now, can, can people take this home yet? Yeah, we do we have, have, what? We have growlers available. Growlers! You can fill a growler at the bar, and uh, if it finds its way into your suitcase, we're not gonna stop you. I love it, you mean you can actually get a growler of this beer that will never be made again. Absolutely. Because this is it, and you can bring it home. Oh, that's time, he's gotta go do another brew. So until it's next time, time, everyone, on cruise and cheers. Have a good one, cheers. cheers.